Hey everyone, it's Donna. Um, I'm doing something different today. If you follow me, you probably know that it's unusual for me to talk about what's going on in the outside world. I prefer to stay focused on my message of kindness and caring and um, although this is about kindness and caring. Um, but knowing that I serve a variety of different people who come from different faiths and different political ideologies and different ideas and different backgrounds, um, I tend to just stay focused on the message and not really speak up um, about things happening in the world. But I can't, you know, I'm sitting here... Um, I'm sitting here this week after the events of last week and continuing on to this week and thinking about my friends and colleagues and customers who are also my friends, audience members who are also my friends and your team members that have been in my training courses and I consider them friends, I consider you friends. Um, and who are in the black community and I cannot in good conscience just pretend I can't I can't just pretend like what has happened hasn't happened and uh, so I've got a few things to say number one uh, I am horrified and outraged and heartbroken watching a video of that white man, that white police officer with his knee on the neck of George Floyd, a black man for almost nine minutes to the point where he was murdered and watching the police officers stand by, watch it happen and do nothing. Um, I'm outraged and I, um, I also realize this isn't the first time, like it happens all the time. And I, uh, you know, I think part of why I don't say anything is because they don't, I don't know what to say. Um, if I really check myself, I just think, well, as long as I um, live my life, I'm good. I'm not racist. I, um, you know, speak preach the message of love and caring and kindness it will finally it will get through to some people um, but now I'm starting to realize that no that's part of the problem um, is that when you see these injustices you don't speak up um, as a white woman as a white person I don't speak up I don't say this is wrong um, and I hear them I hear them in my training classes I you know we ask the question like tell me about bad customer service versus good customer service and a lot of times people will um, people in the black community will speak up and they'll tell me about some story of them being ignored marginalized um, downright uh, uh, people being downright hostile and I will name it then I'll say that's not bad customer service that's racism but still at the same time not understanding that there was anything I could do about it except live my life as a good person um, check my own biases because we all have them and strive to be a better person in that way um, and I'm starting to change my opinion on that because I'm listening because I'm listening I sat on a call the other day with um, with facilitated by a wonderful black woman but with white women and black w women for the most part having a conversation together about the problem of racism in this country. And I listened to Kelly as she talked about her son being charged with something, some minor infraction that he didn't even commit. Having to go to jail, you know, her having to think about how she dressed, he going to jail, when they went through this whole rigmarole to determine that yes, indeed, he actually was innocent of what they were charging him, there was still a whole process of getting, you know, expunging that record. And there were more stories like that. And there was this one woman who, you know, she said, I'm on this call to talk with you all because I am scared, I am scared, I am afraid for my sons, for my husband, for my uncles, for my brothers, for my friends. 
And I don't, I don't know how we can sit here and, and hear that and not really hear it and not say, you know what, we have to do something because this is not a problem for the, I mean, they are the victims of racism, but it is a problem in the white community and we have got to do something to change it. So to my friends in the black community, um, know that I'm paying attention. Uh, that I'm with you and that I am actively looking for at steps that I can take that will make real change. Um, I also, I want to just, this is not an anti-police officer video, um, but we all know that there can be good people in good organizations with good intentions and still there is a problem that needs to be solved and this is a very deep problem that needs to be solved um I, and i don't i'm not working with the police department i i haven't i haven't got strong grip on what what needs to change except that i suspect it has to do with accountability um a tolerance for some things that we shouldn't be tolerating and um, people speaking up when they see not only overt but covert racism. Uh, and I think that's what we all have to do. Um, to those of you who are in cities or love people in cities that are being um, trashed by looters right now, I, um, I, I feel the same way perhaps as you. I am afraid, I am afraid for um, the people that I love that live in St. Paul. I am afraid for people that I love that live in cities around the country. Um, there are, but, but I wanna just make this distinction because I'm very clear on the distinction and I hope you are as well. There are looters who are in the minority and there are protesters who are in the majority. They are not one in the same. It is not the protesters who are doing this, it's looters who are doing this. And the protesters have the freedom in this country and the right to be out there protesting. And um, so I think, I think we should not let um, the looters, although they have to be stopped, um, but we shouldn't let that distract us from the 400 years, understanding that even after slavery was abolished and um, Martin Luther King and the Civil Rights Movement and Malcolm X, that even after all of those things and those people that we are still in this position and that there is still much work to be done. Um, so, so what do you do? Well, I'm actively seeking that answer to that question, but I have a couple of resources for you that I'm going to share below in the notes. Um, an interview that I did with Lenora Billings Harris, who's a diversity expert, and I think it might help you get some conversation around diversity and inc um, inclusiveness in your workplace. Um, I'm also going to share a resources a resource that Kelly um, Charles Collins who facilitated the discussion that I attended shared with us on how to be a white ally um, against racism and um, yeah and the other thing I would just say is to listen to listen to listen and really hear the stories um, because it, it's a real thing that people of color get treated differently. And I understand that, um, I understand that some of you might be upset about this message that I'm sharing. I understand that some of you may choose to leave this circle and I'm gonna have to be okay with that. Because, because we can't talk about treating people well, that everybody deserves a little red carpet treatment, um, love and caring and kindness and letting each person in front of you know that they matter without acknowledging that there is a whole segment of population um, that gets the consistent message every single day that they don't matter. That's not the red carpet way. So 
um, while this may be a deviation from the, the messages that I typically put out or the way that I typically put them out, it's not really a devi deviation because equality, justice, caring, kindness, equal opportunity, and letting each person know they matter and understanding that first we have to lift up the community, the black community that has been told over and over and over again that they don't matter before we can actually say that we're living and working the red carpet way. Thank you.